Apologies for the long delay in new videos. I'm still debating which topic I want to tackle next. I'm sure some of you are waiting for me to grovel in misery over yet another E3 no-show for Final Fantasy VII, but you'll have to wait a little longer for that. Therapy takes time, after all. What I do want to talk about quickly is the NES Classic. Thanks to the latest restock by Nintendo, I was finally able to score one after years of hovering my mouse over the inflated eBay prices. In fact, I was almost disappointed how easy it was. I just casually walked inside a Target, asked a person working electronics for one, and bam, in and out in five minutes. Compare that to the four Walmarts I called the day before, in which none of the people I spoke to even knew what the NES Classic was, but that's neither here nor there. Walmart's terrible. Anyway, the NES Classic is pretty much what I was hoping for. A convenient little retro box where I can enjoy all the NES games I want at my leisure, thanks especially to the idiot-proof mod software known as Hacksheet. Uh, or is it hockey? Well, anyway, the option's there if you want to expand beyond the initial 30 games included, although they are 30 terrific games in their own right. Unfortunately, there is one notable issue keeping the NES Classic from being the ideal 8-bit throwback, and no, I'm not talking about the admittedly short controller cable. On that subject, there's a fantastic third-party wireless controller you should look into. I tried it myself, and it's perfect. You just plug it in and it works. No input lag or anything. Highly recommended. Instead, I want to raise awareness about the fact that the games in the NES Classic suffer from an audio delay. This was something I gradually started to notice when playing Mega Man 2, which is why I'll be using it as a reference point in this video. Mega Man 2 is one of those games I've replayed over and over almost my entire life, so almost immediately I noticed something was off. The short of it is that every sound effect in the game, from Mega Man's shots to the little landing noise he makes when he jumps, has about a half second delay from when they should play. I was able to finally verify this by comparing the version in the NES Classic to the Legacy Collection, which I also own on PS4. I could also see that the games that I personally modded into the system, such as the other Mega Man games, also suffered from this. I don't know if every single game is affected, it's really hard to tell in some cases, and I imagine a large majority of people won't even notice at all. But it's definitely there, and whether or not it's a deal breaker is up to the individual. I'm not trying to convince anyone not to get the Classic, I still think it's a great machine for convenience sake and for that nostalgic controller, but this is a personal disappointment for me. There have been some suggestions that the type of TV model and or settings could fix this, but so far nothing I've tried has worked. I'm aware of game mode and modern TVs, and I'm not applying any post-processing effects, and I've also tried different sound modes, but nothing's worked. It seems this is a specific issue with the type of emulation hardware the NES Classic uses, which is why, for the moment, the best solution is to add RetroArch to the Classic. Again, it's a very simple process, and unlike Super NES games running through RetroArch, it seems to run NES games just fine with no extra input lag at all. Again, I'm not saying that this is what you should be doing, I'm just making this video to demonstrate the audio delay. So from here on, you'll be seeing Mega Man 2 running on the NES Classic, the Legacy Collection on PS4, and once more on the Classic using RetroArch. Listen in and make your own decisions from there.